Hey everyone, and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast, episode nine. Today I am joined by my good friend, Peyton Rainey Byford. She's an incredible photographer. She travels the world, um, killing her Instagram game, business-minded, just, I mean, I'm so excited to talk to her and let you guys in on who she is. If you haven't found her yet, definitely uh, we'll, we'll figure out and show you guys ways to get connected with her, but welcome to the podcast, Peyton. How's it going? It's going good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Peyton and I, we met, what, maybe two years, a year and a half, two years ago? Yeah. Um, um, we had done one wedding together. I wish we done could do more, but um, uh, we had that one wedding together, and I think that was when we first met. Yep. Did one wedding, and that wedding ended up on the cover of a magazine here yes. in Oklahoma. Yeah. You're awesome at what you do. Oh, um thanks. We we did that, and then we I actually hired you to do a mentor session for me and my photography team um, a couple months back, and just yeah. kind of kept connected there. Um, so I want to know um, and let people know just real quick, kind of um, who you are, what your you know your you know if you're doing your quick pitch on you know your business, who's your client, that kind of thing. Um, you know, who are you looking for? Or do you, do you like to stay local? You like to travel? Just tell me a little bit about your business, how it got going, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I've been a wedding photographer for about three and a half years now. Um, that was from like when I first started. So full time, maybe two and a half. I think I'm going like on my third year right now. Um, I do a lot of of local weddings, despite what people think. They think that I only take travel weddings, but I do love my local weddings and I do a lot of them. Um, and, but I'd love traveling. I always have, um, me and my husband would always, um, you know, do photos and video together as we were traveling. Um, not necessarily for weddings, of course. And that kind of came later when I realized, Oh wait, I could like actually maybe get paid for yes. traveling <laughs> before it was like I started photography to kind of help fund my traveling. And mm -hmm. then it was like, wait, I could combine the two. Um, so I do both. Uh, I still love being home and, and Oklahoma is like our happy place. Um, we are going to stay here, although we've been to some really amazing places. Um, and yeah, I, we kind of just, I got started whenever I got engaged and we'd always, always really been into photography. Um, but uh, it was kind of the traveling that inspired me and then being engaged that made me realize that weddings and traveling could like go together. So, yeah. and I mean, I was looking through just, I mean, I've been following you since, you know, like I, I saw you on Instagram a couple of years ago and you had like, I don't know, a thousand or so followers. And I was just like, man, this girl's photos are really, really good. And, um, you know, I looked back like a couple of weeks later and it was like 4,000 people were following you. And I was like, holy crap, her Instagram. And then by the time we shot the one wedding together, I think you had like seven or 8,000 Instagram followers. Um, and then when we did our mentor session, I think it was three or four months ago, you had like 25,000 followers. And then a few months later, now you're at like right at 60,000 Instagram <laughs> followers. And every time I look back, it's just like hundreds and hundreds of more people. So I definitely want to talk in a little bit about like what you're doing with Instagram. Um, and then also you do travel a lot. I mean, it, I don't, how many countries have you been to now doing these things? Um, I think like 34 yeah, 34. <laughs> I've been to Oklahoma, <laughs> California, and Mexico. Like, that's that's my travel. Um, so, I mean, it's like U.S., Mexico, Costa Rica, Germany, Switzerland, Bahamas, Ireland, England, Turkey, Greece, Italy, Spain, Belgium, France, Canada, <laughs> Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, like South Korea, Japan, Norway. It just blows my mind, like, where you're going. Um, and then, uh, you know, you're, you've got all these dates coming up, you know, in November, where it is right now. You just got back from uh, Joshua Tree this last yes. week. Yes. Um, and I leave on Monday for Australia. And you're going to Sydney and then Cambodia, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just so cool. And it's like, oh, I, I kind of fangirl out about like, <laughs> man, that's so cool. She gets to travel all over and like do that kind of thing. And your Instagram and the way that you've branded yourself and the way that you've put yourself out there, like is so attractive to brides. And I mean, I'm sure you're getting a lot of your business, you know, from the Instagram world. Yeah, um, for sure. So tell me a little bit, um, you know, since we've been talking about Instagram, for someone new, I guess, or for someone looking to kind of grow, not necessarily just the number on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody, you know, a wedding videographer or photographer, like, what were you doing, um, you know, were you, 
what what advice would you have for somebody that's wanting to grow their Instagram following? Yeah, um, you know, obviously, I think that um, an Instagram following, you know, has so many perks, and it's really it's really great. But um, I I I think mostly like it, it wasn't really I was like, focusing on growing that number as much as I was like focusing on like how can I get my photo like to be really engaged you know and it's not because like oh my god I want those likes you know yeah. for myself it's more like okay well you know because people are like oh people are chasing likes on Instagram people are chasing followers on Instagram mm-hmm. and I'm not chasing those things as much as I'm chasing a new audience mm-hmm. and because when I chase a new audience I get new clients <laughs> and so why wouldn't we try to post something and have like marketing strategies around when we're posting and that way people, new people are finding me every single time I post a photo. So if I don't care about it at all, then it's really going to probably hurt the amount of people, the new people that see me, um, and inquire with me. So, but as far as starting out, um, I think just like really focusing on, um, just your content and creating things that are like really representative of you and your brand and, um, what you love and why you're doing what you're doing and, um, other little, little strategies as far as like, um, the actual content, which of course is, you know, the most important, but then from there, like I've created a little habits for myself that I do. And it's not to say that they're the end all be all of exactly what you do for Instagram, sure. but it's just kind of what I've, uh, just like created for myself. And a lot of time too, just to have a schedule for myself so that I'm not always staring at Instagram, wondering when I should post. It's like, okay, this is when I do it. And then I post and then I can move on with my life and go do other things. But, um, I try to post like por- portrait photos. Um, I know that doesn't really apply to video, <laughs> but it could in a way, if you think about, I guess the way that you're posting, whether it's landscape or not um and then I post like kind of around the same time every day but Mm -hmm. um yeah just like really creating that content that's really going to be like if you see the photo and you're just like in awe of it then most likely other people are going to be too and really like kind of focusing on emotion and just what's unique about it Mm -hmm. yeah and I know that when we talked you know it was more you know what's going to stop somebody in their explore feed and want them you know to click on your photo what's you know what story are you going to tell You know, it's not just, hey, let me put a pretty picture up there, but it's more like, what's this, you know, is somebody going to stop in their tracks and, you know, watch your video or look at your photo? Um, And then, um, you know, I've I've watched you and just the way that you do your wording, the way that you you write different things. um, How much does that play into like your branding? Um, Do you spend a lot of time like... Um, what you you talked about, like you play, you do the same time ish every day, or mm-hmm. are there are there certain things that you're doing, like writing captions out and things beforehand? Are you finding a photo and then just kind of going with what you feel good about, or how does that process work for you? Um, do mm-hmm. you use any third party apps to kind of help you keep it all, um, you know, in order? What's that look like for you? Um, I use uh, Unum, U N U M S to kind of like um, make my feed look pretty <laughs> because you know my pretty feed draws new people in. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I just kind of you know you know when you're creating like when there's something you're really excited about and you can kind of like channel those shoots and I could go oh, well let me go pull from that see if there's a photo in there that I think might go really good with my feed um, and then. Uh, from there, uh, wait, what was the last bit of the question? <laughs> That's <all laughs> my <right>. whole process. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a lot of questions in one. I just kind of, um, you know, what is the process for you when it comes to like, you know, you said you use U N U M or Unum or uh-huh. however you say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But like, are you? I was asking if you write your own captions. Do you oh, have them yeah, planned yeah. at the same time every day, or like, is it pretty mm-hmm. automatic? You work on it once a week, or is it every day a little bit, or how's that go? Mm-hmm. No, my captions pretty much are just kind of what when as I go to post, I like try to come up with something and it's not always clever. But um, unless I'm planning on like being vulnerable, which I don't, you know, do very often on there. Right. Um, <laughs> not because I wouldn't want to. I'm just like, I have no idea what to say. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, no, I don't plan out captions or anything. But I, I do just like try to post like Monday through Friday. And that's really just so I can like focus on my weddings over the weekend. Um, or if I have the weekend off, I can just focus on nothing over the weekend. Um, so Monday through Friday, I post around like two o'clock central standard time. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know why. There's no science to it, really. It's just that's when I do. Nope. And, or if I'm doing something at that time, I'll just post earlier. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't plan a whole lot other than the UNUM and just kind of like go with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think that it, like, when talking to you just about your Instagram, like you are very intentional about the kinds of, you know, imagery that you're putting on your feed. You're not just like always, show, you know, going to show like a cake or something like that. I mean, it's mm-hmm. mainly the couples, um, you know, it, you know, your, your tagline is, you know, adventurous imagery for effortless lovers. And then it's like got this vibe about it. That's just like, it looks like your photo when you post, like, you know, it's you, it's got this feel to it. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask as well, like from, you know, you, you decided two and a half, three years ago, I'm going to do photography. Um, you, you realize that you're really good at it and mm-hmm. you start posting these images. Um, I want to rewind back in your brain. Like, do you remember kind of like the first publication or first thing that kind of, um, posted your photo or like took you from, you know, 200 subscri- or 200 followers to a thousand or like, was there any like aha moment where it was like, boom, this thing finally happened. Um, and then I gained a couple thousand followers or does anything stand like out like that early or was it more of a slow build? Um, it was like, I think there may have been, may have been a point where like I did the style shoot and like one of my photos for the first time got like, you know, I was consistently getting like a hundred or something. And then I was getting up to like, and I got like 800 or something. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what the heck? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of the only one I really like specifically remember. And then it was from there. I feel like it was just kind of figuring out what Instagram likes to see and what Mm -hmm. people like to see, what, what draws their attention. Um, and like, for me, you'll kind of go through my feed and, and my style personally is like, I like, my couple just I like to see them full body and then a little bit of background as well and like I really want to focus on my couple but still it be like in a setting that is a beautiful like landscape if it is a beautiful landscape if not if it's in Oklahoma maybe um <laughs> then I then it's more couple focused and more like emotional more about them and their look and their vibe um and so that's kind of I feel like where my forte is what I really like to do um but So, like, I know that you do a lot of styled shoots and a lot of things like that to kind of um, to build, you know, the type of profile that you're wanting. Um, Was that kind of what you did from the beginning or did you were you just kind of figuring it out for a while? Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really do a whole lot of styled shoots Mm -hmm. anymore um, unless they're like one of ours from like our workshop or Mm -hmm. maybe a mentor session that I'm doing where I'm putting on a styled shoot. Um, but I, uh, mostly it's just because I, I feel like I don't have as much time for them, but they're so much fun. Cause really mm-hmm. it's not just even the portfolio building for the Instagram as much as it's really fun and creative to mm-hmm. just do something for you. And so I think that they're so important and fun mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. Um, and then it happens to be more of what you're after. But, um, um, but at the beginning I did do like a few, uh, hearing that like probably like a few a year that were just like kind of all out styled shoots that were really fun. And, and definitely when I did from the very beginning was kind of really what got my business off the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that it kind of oozes out of you when shooting with you is that you like really do love taking photos and you really do love, you know, getting the couple to just have that raw, real emotion and laugh and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and snuggle and kiss yeah. and uh, like all those things. And um, you definitely take a lot of photos on your the wedding days and, and um, yeah, which is great. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I do know. Yes. And like, but it is, you know, it, being around you and being around other photographers, it's like your brain, you can just see it going during the day. And you're, you're not only thinking about like, you know, Instagram and this would look good on Instagram, but like, you really just right. want to give the couple something that is adventurous and like, it feels effortless and that's, I mean, it's just your taglines for, you know, your site and everything, but, um, yeah, I just really want to give them something that is them and, you know, and like really channels like their, their personality. And I really just try to capture that like the best I can. And, um, 
you know, I think that the photos that I love the most are what they love the most too. So that I think our, our interests are aligned because that's why they chose me in the first place. So it's, it's always really easy to kind of like, Oh, I like, maybe I have in my head, this is, this is a poster. I'm going to post this one right here mm-hmm. as I'm taking it. Mm-hmm. And I'm also like, Oh, they're also going to be so obsessed with this, right. you and, know, this. And that also speaks to like really putting you know, the kinds of photos that you love out there on Instagram or the kind of videos that you love and Mm -hmm. not, you know, um, not everything or every couple you take ends up on your Instagram feed. Um, but the things that like you're really wanting to put out there, the things that you love are going to attract more people. And I'm sure that that snowballed into people reaching out to you saying, Oh my goodness, I've been following you. I love your stuff. Please tell me you're available on your day. Does that kind of stuff happen pretty often now? Or how's that go for you? Yeah, um, I think that I get, I don't, I think I get inquiries like mostly from almost every post that somewhere they'll find it, whether it's through a hashtag or something. Um, and yeah, that's the reason, that's the reason why, I'm, oh, I post in the first place is just draw their attention in. And, um, so yeah, I think they yeah. find me through there. Um, but one thing I think I really want to kind of talk about too, um, for those like starting out who maybe, um, are feeling like because they don't have a large following or something that they're not going to be able to do as well or succeed. Um, Mm -hmm. That uh, I think like right now I've been talking about this a lot, even in my workshops and stuff that although having like a large following has been really has opened a lot of doors in a lot of ways, especially education wise and Mm -hmm. um, just really crazy, awesome like opportunities and experiences like obviously, you know, I still take so many weddings that, and it's in the reasons that I do is because of my couples and it's because of how, um, how I connect with them and how, um, awesome they are and how excited they are to work with me. And that's all I ever really look for in a couple. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think for those starting out to, um, having a large following, it can sometimes, um, really deter clients sometimes from wanting to reach out to me in the first place. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe they're intimidated or maybe they don't relate to such a large number on my Instagram feed. And that's all I ever want to be is relatable to them. Um, And so a point in my career where I felt like I was really just taking off and getting all the inquiries, I really only had like three or 4,000 followers or something like Mm -hmm. that. And that was like, you know, and now I do, people do tell me when I've, I finally talked to them, they're like, yeah, I actually almost didn't reach out to you because of that thing is I thought you'd maybe be too expensive. Or I thought you maybe for sure be booked. Um, or I just thought that, you know, you wouldn't want my wedding. It wouldn't be cool enough or yeah. something. And I'm like, that's never yeah. the case. Like, and so yeah, something yeah, you said huge. about it. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people like look at numbers and that's kind of, you know, at the beginning of this year, we had you know, 14 or 15,000, you know, Instagram followers on redeemed productions. And like, I just went through and deleted a lot of the bots and the things. And like, just cause I really cared more so about like, I'd rather have a hundred followers that love me, like just love mm-hmm. the crap out of me, you know, than a yeah. hundred thousand followers that like don't care. And so, mm-hmm. um, that is, that is a, a good point because I think people see, you know, 60,000 or a hundred thousand or a million followers. And it's like, Oh, I want to be there as mm-hmm. opposed to like just staying true to who you are right? and really focusing on, you know, building the, the type of engagement that you want with the type of people that you want. And I've seen some mm-hmm. of your posts recently just about like, you know, Th- that whole subject of the people aren't reaching out to you because they think that you, they're not cool enough. Or, and that's, mm-hmm. that's not what we want at all as creatives. You know, we want people yeah. that, that love our style and love us so we can help tell their story. And yeah. so that's a huge point. Um, a little more just about like the building, the, 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 the timeline, I guess. So um, of your business and the growing it and, you know, a lot of Instagram growth, um, you have been featured in lots of different publications, lots of different, you know, magazines and just, I mean, I see a lot of, you know, you posting, thank you so much, you know, style me prettier. Thank you so much June bug weddings, or thank you this mm-hmm. for tagging me. And so you're getting all these people tagging you. And I know that every time that they post, you know, the, the photos that you're, you know, they sharing your photos, you're getting lots of new followers and lots of new reach. And that's what the point is. Um, what is your process? Like, do you have certain, um, you know, Instagram accounts that you're trying to tag or reach out to? Are you doing that? Or are you just randomly finding out that 
someone with six million followers shared one of your fo- photos or like how does how does that work? I feel like Instagram has changed so much, and it, I think even as of recently, it's been different. But I think whenever feature accounts were kind of a newer thing. Um, it was something that um, really was really helpful to sometimes to your to your reaching new people, you know. Um, but now there's kind of so many feature accounts that there's a few that I really like love. Like maybe I personally kind of know them or have talked to them, mm-hmm. and um, it's just kind of building that community with with them sometimes and they're the they're ones that I know like um I do love to get featured on them because mm-hmm. it is beneficial for both of us and um and maybe they've like messaged me and like hey can we feature this photo and I'm like for sure um but now I I don't really tag as much because there's just so many and mm-hmm. um yeah so it, it's helpful I think there's those few that are really fun to like um, tag still, you know, like my favorites, like mm-hmm. Junebug and Green Wedding Shoes. And um, so, but. But the point, I guess, is like, you're not just, are, are you reaching out at all to any of, like, especially as you were growing or you feel like it's a waste of time now for people like, you know, in the wedding video side of things, it's like there's certain accounts that it's like, well, if they shared our video, that would be really beneficial to us. But uh-huh. are, are you seeing that you you did you do that a lot as you were growing or did you kind of stop now because Instagram is changing or what what do you think on that yeah a lot like a couple of years ago I tagged a lot more um but I don't quite as much and maybe that's just because I don't feel like I need to as much I don't really know um but there's just been um just with feature accounts it's it, it doesn't I don't feel like it does quite so as much as people might think that it does in helping. Um, but there are definitely ones that do help for sure. hundred um, percent. Yeah. And, and so like as I kind of mentioned earlier, like your account would grow and I would look back and there'd be more and more people. And I think a lot of people probably reached out and are like, what is the secret to, to what you're doing? But what what I see, you know, as um I say it a lot on the podcast here, but like I build a business the crock pot method, not the microwave method. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like putting in the work and taking it, like building that brand, having the photos up there for when something does happen, like you get shared um, by, you know, a celebrity or by, you know, something like that. Um, Like, I just think that a lot of people think that there's some kind of like secret behind the scenes thing. That's an algorithm. That's um, that doesn't seem like what you're focusing on. It seems like you're focusing on, posting killer photos trying to get those in front of the eyeballs of as many people as possible um so when something does happen that's big they can click to your profile they say that you know when they look at when someone new is looking at your grid they give it about two seconds to look at your last nine photos before they decide whether or not they're going to follow you or not um so tell me what happened i guess since we did our mentor session till now it's taking you from 20, I think you were just about to hit 25,000 when we were meeting. Um, and now it's up to 60, which is more than doubled in, we did that, what, three months ago? Uh, I, I think it was, I think it was summertime. It, right, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been a year ago, but it feels like three, three or four yeah. months. I think it was summertime um, or like August or something. Um, yeah. What happened? Tell me about the, the big wedding, that one big wedding that you did, kind of what, <laughs> what that did for you. Is that was I just about to shoot it? Yeah, it was like the week or two before. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so it was a really fun wedding. Um, and uh, without talking too much, just specifically, they it was in California, and um, uh, her and her brother, they're like YouTubers, and um, they or like Vine is kind of where they got started and that sort of thing. But after that wedding, um her and her brother both posted a photo from it and because he had like walked down the aisle and it was really sweet mm-hmm. um and uh i got like ten thousand followers in like one day yeah. well, that's <laughs> was, a good that's a good moment so crazy. Yeah. um so that that's where those came from i can't mm-hmm. adjust it to anything that i did other than take good photos for them and do a good job for them um but um that obviously doesn't account for all of them. Um, mostly it's just been like a consistent growth. Yeah. Um, before and after that, just from different shoots that 
I've done and yeah. I think the point that I was was making is not like, oh, you did like a YouTuber celebrity wedding necessarily, but the fact that like, yes, I think she had a couple million followers and he's got way more millions of followers or something like that. Um, But the point is whenever they did share your photo, Mm -hmm. people went to your profile and was like, they were like, holy crap, her photos are ridiculously good. I want to follow her. Because people share photos all the time, mm-hmm. but like the thing that you have is this look and this vibe about your photos and the way that you have branded and the way that you put yourself out there that it's like, oh, I've, I actually want to see where she travels to next. I want to see what photos she's going to post. I'm inspired by those photos. So that is, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to help communicate to our people is to build that slow drip. So whenever there is something that could be lightning that you know, you can catch that when it happens. And so mm-hmm. going overnight, you know, like I remember texting you or something like right after that wedding or messaging you or something and saying, Oh yeah, we did talk about it. It was like, Hey, that, that you know, it's like pretty big deal that you, whatever. And I, every time I would go back to your profile, I'd, I would just refresh and it would be up by like 2000 more people. And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh my goodness. So like, so happy for you because it's like, not that the, like, that's not just like a random inflated number, but that's actually like people that, would actually care about following you that exponentially will grow your business because you Mm -hmm. did the little things leading up to it day in and day out posting and putting the imagery out there that you wanted to. And so, um, I think that that was the point, not necessarily, you know, doing (laughs) um, it. So, um, yeah. Any other? It was just fun, new yeah. experience. Not something I usually do, so it was kind of right. out of the ordinary. But you know, yeah, like again, you you know, you hustle a little hard now and do the things, and but you know, in, with intention, um, mm-hmm. and for your couples, then yeah, you'll you get to have fun opportunities like that. Um, Absolutely, consistently won't be something that is, uh, you know, but just you know. A hundred percent. I mean, we could talk about Instagram for the whole hour. I want to move on to a couple other topics. If you, um, if people do want to see your Instagram, what's the tag? What's your username? How can they find you? <laughs> At Peyton R. Byford. Okay. Yes. And that's P-E-Y-T-O-N, the letter R as in Rainey, and then Byford, B-Y-F-O-R-D. Yep. There you go. They'll that's find it. you. Yep. <laughs> Definitely check yeah. her out and, and watch what she's doing. Um, give her a follow. I mean, you, there's workshops and different things that you do that I'll let you chat about here in a little bit. But um, if they want to, you know, connect and even learn more from you, they can definitely do that. You do mentor sessions, you do all kinds of stuff. But um, the reason, you know, Nick and I were talking about um, working with photographers. So switching, Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of the pace over to talking about actually wedding days and adding more value to the listeners here, even um, on top of the Instagram chat. But like, Um, Just your experience traveling, working with different videographers. I wanted to kind of just dive in um, from a photographer's perspective. A lot of the videographers gripe and complain about photographers getting in their way and not caring about what they're, you know, like they don't give them the time of the day and that photography is important and videos and afterthought or the the stepchild or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So working with someone like you, um, I just thought it would be cool to chat with you just about your experience on the opposite side. I know your husband is a wedding videographer, but you're not always working with him. Um, Mm -hmm. Just kind of your experience, things that you like, um, things you don't like. We'll start with just some, maybe some of the experiences you've had, or maybe even any stories that you've had of working with videographers yeah. that weren't that weren't somebody you wanted to recommend. Because at the end of the day, we want to help our listeners work with photographers, and the photographer want to work with them again. So, any yeah. stories stand out to you? Um, go for it. Um, <laughs> so there is. So just to first start out, like. I, I feel like my personally, the way that I gauge a, a good videographer that I enjoy working with personally, not maybe mm-hmm. someone like based off their works, maybe I, I haven't seen it most of the time before I even get to meet them. Um, but just as far as like the experience goes with them, um, like talk to the, talk to me, like, <laughs> talk to the, vi- talk to the photographer. Like, even if you are with someone else, like you are shooting with two people, like I absolutely hate when the videographer is not like even trying to say hi or like shake my hand or like talk to me throughout the night. Like I kind of love having that community feel like, and just like, Oh, Hey, yeah, we're in this together type of thing during the wedding day. And just sometimes they're just like, 
And maybe they just don't want to talk. Maybe they like to be by themselves. And that's totally fine. But, you know, market yourself and like, it could actually be something that's really beneficial to you. So maybe put on your uh, smiley face if you don't like <laughs> chatting to people and try. <laughs> but I like talking and I like having someone to eat dinner with during the wedding. And um, so I was, I had just had a videographer the other night that I was the second time I'd worked with him. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad it's you because I'm working alone tonight and I know you're going to talk to me. <laughs> So, yeah, and I think it's a big deal. Like, so if you're in video, sometimes you're not the most like socially, you know, inept <laughs> person. You might be a little socially awkward, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. I mean, you know, you kind of get that a little bit, the camera geek, whatever. But that is so huge to just like say hi to the photographer, make sure that they know, like communicate with them. I know one thing yes. that I do, you know, the first time we were working you know, I kind of had looked up your, you know, I knew who you were, but like any new photographer, I'm always going to their Instagram or their Facebook and like seeing the mm -hmm. kinds of images they have. I might even reach out via email. I think I did that before we did the one wedding was yeah. just like, here's my timeline. Here's kind of how I work. Mm -hmm. Does this flow with you? I don't want to be, you know, just communication um, mm -hmm. and just how much that really goes into you know, I want to make sure that you have time for your portraits, but I also like to step in. So if you're taking some portraits, I might hey, can I grab the couple for a second and do something while you switch lenses or, you know, just really mm -hmm. trying to over communicate before it even happens. And then mm -hmm. putting on the smile, like you said, during the wedding day, when you get there, just introducing yourself, remembering the photographer's name, seeing if you can be of any help, and then just kind of have that teamwork mentality from the beginning, as opposed to like, mm -hmm. right. you're going to get in my way, I'm going to get in your way. You know, I, I will make jokes like I'm going to do my best to get in as many of your photos as possible. You know, like I'll say things like that just to kind of ease the, the pressure because mm -hmm. we're all there trying to get really good stuff. But yeah. like there is sometimes, you know, that like you'll work with a photographer that thinks they're a really big deal or something or, you know, the same thing. I'm sure you guys work with the videographers that think they're a really big deal. So great first point. Just brings me to stories too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that that's definitely the basic that. The great first point, yes, being just communicating with the photographer um, and just like having that teamwork aspect. Um, it's really, it makes it fun, at least for me. I, I enjoy like being able to look across and like, do you get that shot? Did you see that happen? Mm -hmm. Like those kinds of, you know, like it's, it's fun. It makes it more fun. Like rather than just sitting there and then awkward, like. <laughs> you should be able to like draw inspiration from each other, you know. Yeah, like, and, absolutely. And that's where you know, the photographers that we recommend, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the ones we love to work with are the ones that like, I shoot better video because the photographer's there. They're really good at posing and the photographer feels like they get more stuff because I'm really good at, you know, getting them to mm -hmm. laugh or like, we're really just this big team. Absolutely. Um, and that's when it makes it much easier for you when you, you know, you're having a couple that needs video that's like, Oh, check out, you know, John with Redeemed Productions, because he's so much fun to work with. He'll be it. And I get a lot of my referrals from other photographers. So, all right. So yeah. point one, put on your smile, connect, take good yes. care of them. What else stands out to you on just advice you would give um, to videographers when working with photographers, maybe during the getting ready or the ceremony or anything mm -hmm. kind of stand out to you that um, maybe bugs you about what some videographers do or things that you love? So the second point that I would make is um, have have an opinion. I think that a lot of videographers just like to slide by and just let the photographer do all the work. And it's fine it could, to give us the reins for the most part. But a lot of, I think, that stigma of like the photographer is the more important, so to say, is because a lot of the times videographers don't even try to attempt to have any sort of opinion or about anything. That's huge. And and so I really love videographers that, again, that teamwork aspect where, like, I feel like they want to interject. I'm like, yes, please. Like, it, it's actually nice for me to take, like, a second and watch what, you know, and just let them take over for a second. It's very refreshing. Whereas then I'm like, I'm turning. I'm like, is there anything you want? And they're like, no. And then that could be because they really got everything they <laughs> yeah. wanted. Or it could just be because they want me to do all the work. <laughs> and no. there's a difference. And I can tell the difference as soon as I answer. I think, no, actually, that was really great. And I got everything I needed. Or just like, oh, no, I'm good. You're, you're good. You're good now. I'm like, or I'm like, hey, how do you feel about this spot? Like, oh, whatever you want. I'm like, 
have, tell me, give me some feedback. But I'm a very verbal processor, so I like to like bounce ideas off of people. And I really love when videographers actually have creative opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think that until like maybe a, a few years ago, videography and videographers, like I was, you know, doing this longer than three or four years ago. But like we kind of just feel like we are supposed to document whatever's happening instead yeah. of like taking the reins a little bit. And like I would say that about four years ago, I started doing some of those things like immediately, Hey, do you mind if I turn the lights off in this room? It, it doesn't look good on video. Hey, do you mind um, if I move some stuff around and we do the first look right here or we do yeah. makeup right here. And, you know, and I, yeah. I'm, if I've built that relationship with the photographer, I feel okay to say, Hey, I'm going to, I want to hang the dress over here instead. The light looks better over here. What do you think? And um, mm -hmm. the photographer is just a person that is like, the star of the show a lot of the time you know and it's like giving the photographer a few minutes just to like take a breath think about something hey you know i changed change my lens you want to do something you know mm -hmm. um, just giving you that ability is going to help the couple get even better photos as well mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think a lot of times the videographer just comes into it thinking like okay i've got to work around this photographer instead of working with this photographer mm -hmm. so having an opinion that that's a huge thing that we've started doing, you know, my wedding last weekend, um, the photographer doesn't do a lot of like the couple looking at each other or like, you know, the photographer is a little more posed. And after he would take a couple of photos, I'd be like, Hey, Hey, can we, can we actually real quick, you know, he'd be in the middle of taking his photos and I'd say, yeah. Hey, when you get done right there, I want to do something. And he would be like, Oh, cool. And as soon as he got a shot, I'd be like, okay, guys, I want you to look at each other. I want you to dance a little bit. I want to pull you to pull each other in or I want you to whisper in mm -hmm. her ear or whatever that was. And then I saw him click, 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 taking photos. Yeah. And he, he probably will pull some inspiration from me moving forward. You know, um, the wedding we did, you made like a tunnel with the bride and the groom or the bridesmaids and the groomsmen. And I just yeah. loved the way it felt. Everybody felt more natural. And like there was this big yeah. tunnel and you had the couple run through it. And um, the next wedding I did, I was like, I'm doing the tunnel. Like I want to do the tunnel. <laughs> And I did it differently, but it was like, we should be able to draw inspiration off of each other. Mm -hmm. And you're leaving the photographer kind of, you know, you're not helping them by just being a bump on a log. So that's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely have an opinion, you know, in a way that doesn't offend or slow everything down as the videographer. Because when it comes down to it, there are parts of the day that the photographer does need to have this, the control of what's happening. You know, right. the, the uh, family photos time or, you know, the portraits or, you know, like there's some collab time where it's like together we're doing this. But there are lots mm -hmm. of times, too, where it's like I will tell the photographer, you know, family photos. I do not care where you do them. I'm not going to use that in my footage. I'm going to film them just as a safety net. But like the light looks really good over there if you want. But I don't care. Like, you know, I will, yeah, let, I will right. have the opinion that I don't care. I and there's things that I'm in the same way, like, cause you guys are really, you really love the letter reading. So a mm -hmm. lot of times that's a big thing that goes into the videos where I'm like, I care less about it. Cause I really only need a few shots from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll kind of like let the videographer decide if they want or have an opinion. <laughs> if yeah. not, then I'm like, sure I'll do it. Um, so. And I will do this too. Like in every photographer that I've asked is like, Oh, of course, you know, right before the letters or before anything yeah. with audio. Cause that is really important to most yeah. of us. I'll be like, yeah. Hey Peyton, we're going to do the letter. It, I'm going to run a microphone. If you could not be trigger happy during the letter reading, unless you know, she gets emotional or something like that, but I'm mm -hmm. going to hear all those clicks. So if you can take a sec to like try to click between when she's taking a breath or between words, that'll help me in post because you don't know that like every single time there's like a click, mm -hmm. I've got to mute that click and it takes me two seconds times the 30 pictures and it just wastes time. So yeah. I've been going up to the photographers and saying, Hey, during the first look, you know, like, or during the letter, especially, or I'm going to interview the, the bride or I'm going to interview the groom. Mm -hmm. Can you not be clicking a ton? You know, and every, <laughs> every photographer has been like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. And I'll, I sense. will reiterate yeah. and say, Feel free to take photos. I'm not telling you not to, but just be aware that I'm recording audio. Right, right. And I think you're the only person that's ever said that. And, and that's, that's something to be said. Like, I've never had anyone ever else ask me that. Maybe they're just too scared. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't have, I don't know. Or maybe they're just going to do the work afterwards. But I think it's so smart because I'm always for doing 
getting rid of whatever it is <laughs> up front without having to do the work later. Like, right. I'm not like, oh, I'll just edit that out. Like, no, I'm going to take it out of the photo. Yep. <laughs> so I don't have to edit it out later. <laughs> right. We don't want to have to use the clone stamp unless we have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It All takes right. a lot more time. Absolutely. Um, any other pointers you think that like on the wedding day, maybe the ceremony, um, have you had any like video people ruin shots during your ceremony or how do you do that? How do you work with videographers during the ceremony? The mi biggest time I've ever really had um, a videographer ruin my shot during the ceremony was when they are like walking back up the aisle. Um, and this is the same as far as exits go. Um, I really just like to tell them like, let, like be shoulder to shoulder with mm -hmm. me. Like if you're out in front of me at all, I'm going to see it. Like I'm going to see your lens, maybe not mm -hmm. you, but the end of your lens, the tip of it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and that's, that's the thing. And so it was like someone who, um, had just kind of stepped out in front of me and I've really only had one videographer who was just, oh, in every aspect as far as um stepping out in front of me in like almost every single photo that I could think of like even during the dance floor I'd be like shooting something on the dance floor and they would be on the opposite side of me on the dance floor I'm like just come over here next to me and we can get both get this same shot um but most people are mindful and they see that okay someone yeah. died and I do the same thing with video I see they're recording I try to go out of the it's way almost of like shot, a but... dance that you guys do with you know <laughs> we do with each other and again yeah. it, Every like before the ceremony, I'm always like um, to the photographer, I'll be like, where do you plan on being during the processional? And where do you plan on being during the ceremony? And where do you plan on being during the kiss? And, yeah. you, can, you know, some photographers are like, I have no idea. I, I'm going to walk around. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. I kind of need to know a little bit. And then if yeah. I will say I have a camera over here that's on a 70 to 200. I have one over here that's a 70 to 200. And I'm going to have a wide one or what? And I'll just explain. Yeah. The cameras that I have, just please be aware. Definitely can step in front of any of them. Just let me know. Like, just be aware that standing in the middle of the aisle might ruin every angle of my, you know, video or something. Yeah. And I, I will communicate. Like, usually the photographer wants to be up at the front, shooting down mm -hmm. the aisle, or they want to be right in the middle of the aisle or right in the back of the aisle. Um, yeah. If you're outside, you have a little more room, different things like that. But just communicating beforehand, you know, like I love to be up at the front. Um, during the, when the bride's walking down the aisle so I can see her face. But mm -hmm. I, I also have a second shooter that's on a 70 to 200 getting the groom's reaction. So I always just point out to the photographer, Hey, there's my second shooter. I really want to see the groom's face. And I really mm -hmm. want to see the bride's face. Will I be in your way if I'm right here? And mm -hmm. if they're like, yeah, you'll be in the way. I'll be like, well, what if I'm over on this side and I'm willing to move things, but yeah. if you don't communicate beforehand, I'm going to end up in your shot. You're going to end up in my shot. You can, yeah. you can remove me and I could remove you, but it takes a lot more to remove somebody out of video, which I'm not willing to do. So just having that communication and the same thing too, with like the dances or the grand entrance or the exit, I just think mm -hmm. the main point is like, are you communicating for the big moments that are live right. to each other and, and figuring yeah. out or if you're in each other's way? Um, yeah. Anything else on that side of things that I'm not thinking about? Um, and I think that that's it. And like, and I think photographers um, should be uh, better at like reaching out to the videographer um, at the wedding and being like, hey, where are you going to be during the ceremony? But I feel like I tend to have the videographers come up to me most of the time. And that's maybe just because um, I, some of my weddings don't even have videographers. So we're a lot more used to just like doing everything exactly the same way as we always do it. And whereas I think videography, you guys kind of like you adapt a lot more to every situation. So, um, yeah, just reminding to go up and ask a photographer because sometimes I forget and then I'm like, Oh, I'm really glad you came up to me and asked me that because I do want to go over where we're going to be during the, this ceremony. That's smart. And I will do like, if I'm about to get a shot and like you're, you know, you're in your lens, so I mean, you're in your camera. So your face is like mm -hmm. covered up and your eye is inside of, you know, you, you don't see me a lot of times or like I might sneak yeah. up all stealthy ninja like and be yeah. right next to you. Um, so I'll like either put a light hand on your shoulder or like just tap you and say I'm right here. Or like I always mm -hmm. am trying to like, oh, I slid right in next to you or trying to make sure that like, you know, I'm there just so you know, don't back up. I'm right here. I'll just put like a light hand on your mm -hmm. back or like just I'm right behind you. So that way, you know, 
I'm around. And obviously yeah. if I haven't built a relationship or communicated with you all day long and then I'm like putting my hand on your back, you're like, back off, man, get away from me. <laughs> but like just having the ability to to communicate, whether it be verbally or, you know, just a, a light shoulder tap, I'm right here, um, helps the photographer, you know, make sure. And then also um, one thing I was going to say is like a lot of times I will be filming and the photographer will be like in front of me, but like to the left or something, but they're in my shot and they don't think they are because they think I'm tighter. Yeah. I will like grab their attention and be like, can you, you know, just point a little bit. Can you scoot over a little bit? And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. And if not, uh -huh. you know, if not, I can move my lens a little bit, but just again, reiterating that you, you're a team, you're working together. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think that that that's important. Those are like kind of the two biggest things for me. And, and, and also at the end of the day, like if they're taking some of the reins and they're having an opinion about something and they're like communicating and all those things. And it's a really, it was like a really smooth process. Or even if there was a hiccup, like it was like really like respectful and corrected. Then like, I appreciate that more than anything. Like, you know, and, um, at the end of the day, those are the ones that I recommend. Or at the end of the day, if I felt like they were just like, literally standing in corners and like I never heard from them and I don't even remember their name because they didn't like mm -hmm. talk yeah. to me at all then I'm like well I'm I yeah I hope I don't have to work with them again or something right. or it could be a family friend and that could have been why or something I know that happens sometimes right but. and uh, when it comes down to it is like you as a videographer want to leave an impression with the photographer that you're fun you're easy to work with you're creative and mm -hmm. that like you, you're passionate. Yeah, you're passionate about it. And whenever somebody is like, oh, I'm using, I'm considering using, you know, company A or Redeemed Productions and they're talking to you, I want you to be like, oh, you definitely want to use Redeemed Productions. John's great. Um, yeah. Because I will say like of the 30 weddings that we're doing this year, like 13 of them are photographer recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's like almost half of them and I don't have to pay for that marketing, mm -hmm. but just taking that extra time, putting in the work because um, that's just the thing people just usually book photography before videography and just mm -hmm. like for us like people book venue usually before they book us so we you know mm -hmm. there's always that person right before you and they can recommend it. have you had anyone on the video side of things like after the wedding um, either share the video with you or tag you in the video do you ever like the videographers ever do that kind of stuff is there anything that would make it easier for you as the the photographer to have the ability to share our work? Um, yeah, I've had a couple times people send me the videos, like reach out and be like, Hey, I just wanted to send you this. And, um, I can't say I've ever like shared it on my Instagram as more as I sure. just helps me remember mm -hmm. them and really connect with them even more because of it. And, um, yeah, what about, but I, like, I feel like it would. What about like on the story side of things? Have you had people, not necessarily videographers, but like do people tag you and you reshare their stories ever? Or is there anything that people are doing that is right with the stories? I totally would if someone did that. Because that the add to your story thing is such a new feature. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that happen yet. No. Um, but if I had a videographer tag me in the story, I would definitely repost it. Or, or maybe I would even retoast it from their feed and be like, check out our couple and this the videographer. Yeah. I would do that now. And that's what 100%. I think is a huge thing like that we've been doing. And so what I try to do a couple of times, and you tell me if you think this is dumb or not, um, I will take some behind the scenes photos of you taking photos. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll be like, you know, Peyton Rainey in action. And it's like a photo of, or like a, a quick 10 second video from Instagram in my mm -hmm. stories of you like doing your thing and I'll tag you in it. Because yeah. I think a lot of times on the video side of things, we can actually take some footage, you know, of you and get it to you. And like, that's actually helpful for you yeah. because nobody's taking photos of you because you're taking and if photos. And if that sounds tedious, you could always even just do something on your phone. Yeah. Literally just take a little video of yeah. like behind the scenes and tag. I, I remember I had a couple of uh, videography couple that did that recently and they're like, Oh, working with Peyton Rainey. And I was like, um, in there for shooting and I totally put it on my story. Yeah. And, and, and I think thinking outside of the box a little bit as the video crew saying, oh, well, during the portraits, I might take like a couple of Instagram videos so I can share mm -hmm. them in a little bit. And then also we've started doing um, a couple of these things where like if we're using a photographer that's not Redeemed Productions, 
I will get the camera and just during the portrait session film like five or six clips of you doing what you do. Yeah. I will mix it together with a little music and send it to you. And it's like, ding 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 like the photographers love having just like some footage of them with the couple you know like a shot of the you know the shooting towards their lens real quick you know it's like hey Peyton act like you're taking a photo I'm filming you do that real quick now I give you (laughs) you know give you something that you can have as stock footage you know to use later so um well I love all that um I love the idea of working with each other on photo video and there's so many more things but the overall theme is just to be thinking about it from each other's perspective, communicating, smiling, having an opinion. Um, the last part of the, the talk, and um, I wanted to go, just talk a little bit about what you're doing helping the community of photographers. Um, our audience is mainly video, um, but I think that what you're doing with your mentor sessions, what you're doing with your templates and different things that you've been doing um, mm-hmm. on the business side of things, because you're kind of this business guru too, which is pretty cool. Like you're, nice. you're really good at like building your business and you've, you've turned it from nothing into something that's quite profitable. Um, so the last little bit of the conversation, last five, 10 minutes or so, just talking about um, a couple of, of things about your business and what you're doing. Um, first of all, just real quick about how many weddings will you shoot this year? This year um, for 2018. Uh-huh. How many have I? Um, so by the end of this year, I'll have shot like 46 or something stupid. 46 <laughs> weddings, which is too many weddings, which I keep telling too, you. Too many weddings, yeah. But, so uh, for next year, I, I'm i I'm leaving it at like 30. We'll see. I'll ask you in like 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> They'll yeah, be yeah, like, kidding, do you yeah. want to come to Morocco? Yeah, I'll do that one. I'll, I'll, I'll do okay, four. sure. Why not? Yeah. I'll just, I only have like three days, but I'll, I'll come out there. Yes. Like, yeah, um, I guess. So, I've done that. <laughs> so a lot of weddings. Um, and you're, you know, charging a great amount for your, I mean, you're doing great. You're built, you're, you know, in that cycle where it's, there's so many people that want you and you're raising your prices as you've built your fan base of people, you know, all these followers, um, I'm sure people started reaching out, um, kind of asking you questions and things like that. You probably started doing some mentor sessions. Um, mm-hmm. when did, when did those people start reaching out and what have you been, you know, what kinds of things are you doing now? to kind of help out photographers, potentially video people um, with their business? Yeah, um, it's just kind of random when they've reached out um, pretty often, though. uh, And yeah, I do mentor sessions, private mentor sessions, um, where it's like three hours. And then they can also add on a shoot where I kind of go over. um, Basically, I'll just leave the shoot and you kind of see how I would operate like a normal shoot. Um, and then I also, um, we also have a workshop, me and my, um, photographer friend and business partner for that. Um, her name's Kylie and we work together. Um, what's her Instagram we, name? Uh, Kylie Morgan. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we, uh, so right now our workshop is, uh, twice a year is kind of the plan mm-hmm. and we're going to go back and forth between Alaska and Hawaii. Um, as far as where it'll be, um, I always knew I wanted those workshops to be destination because it just kind of fit, mm-hmm. um, m- like just my brand more. And she felt the same way, and so we really love those two kind of those destinations, kind of just a little bit more untouched than the rest of, uh, especially Alaska. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's amazing. So um, yeah, so you we already to, did. We- you did one of those in Alaska. It's called yes. Wild and Unwritten, correct? Yes. Yep. Yes. And people can find that on Instagram as well. Is it just yes. at Wild and Unwritten? At Wild and Unwritten or okay. uh, Wild and Unwritten dot com. Okay. Um, and and uh, who, who's the like target typically for that? Is it mainly female? Is it male or female photography? Would a video person potentially want to check it out? So um, it could apply to video. I've never really considered it. Um, I've thought about it to be honest. Um, it could. Um, but as far as mentor sessions go, could also apply as far as the business side of things go. Um, I do have my finance guide, which a hundred percent would apply to video as well. Um, even the timelines really, but the photographer may have already taken care of it by then. So, um, but yeah, so uh, the the workshop the the wild and unwritten back to that just for a second is yeah, yeah. Hawaii and Alaska twice a year. Um, it's mainly yeah, yeah. a photography workshop. Potentially could be you know a video person looking for photography 
just it's a, a three day is that right three or four days uh yeah three days mm -hmm. uh four three nights or kind of three and a half days yeah. um and uh our next one is this january in Kauai. um and you sold yeah. out of that in like two seconds <laughs> It was really quickly. Yeah. yeah, it was really quickly. Um, so cool. Yeah, and that, yeah. that looks like a ton of fun, obviously, Kauai and, you know, January. Mm -hmm. We Great keep it small and intimate, so it's only like 15 people per yeah. workshop because we really like to just – that that was really what was important to us when we were doing yeah. a workshop. Was just That's real small. cool. Um, and so you did mention just for a second, I've seen recently you have two kind of like template or products that you have out, and they're on your site, but the fir yeah. the first one is like – a timeline questionnaire um, and templates that you send uh -huh. out. What are those? So it was mostly because I really wanted to, I felt like I needed to create a photo based timeline for each wedding. I, there's just too many um, questions up in the air. Sometimes when the photographer or videographer isn't the one that is actually telling um, how much time they're going to need for each aspect of the day. Um, and it just helps really make expectations very very clear so i don't know if there's ever been a time where you're like oh wow i didn't realize or they maybe they last minute changed the exit to some time and to one hour later and your coverage was supposed to end but now you feel bad because you didn't communicate that and do you stay or do you leave do you piss off your couple do you not um and expectations are very clear and set in stone from the beginning and they also have the ability to kind of tell you about the day what's going to be going on and you can have a better just do a better job at capturing weight. Yeah, that's huge. Need. And I mean, whenever we did our mentor session together, like we walked through some of these questionnaires and, um, you know, the price is 40 bucks and like it definitely worth it, it even on the video side of things um, to yeah. have something like that. And they can grab that on your, your Peyton Rainey website. Um, yeah. Cool. And then the other yeah. thing um, <clears throat> you just kind of released this one. Yes. A small business creatives guide to finance or finance. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what's <laughs> what's in that. How did you develop this? Who did you develop it with? Because I think this mm -hmm. one really would help. Um, yes, the videographers. Because most of us suck at business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't specialize in, in business, well, so to say, um, or they don't enjoy it. You know, that's the biggest thing is that they just they put it off because they're not. It's not fun. Um, and I've always really loved that side of it, especially the finance side of it even. It's um, really, really fun. Um, so I developed this with my CPA. Okay. Um, and he is from Utah, but he's, he's really awesome. And he really cares about each of his clients and their business and like saving them money and um, really just doing the best job he can for them. Not just being someone that's just going to file their taxes and then like move on, you know? Right. Um, and so we really kind of created this to really be specific to small business owners, specifically creatives as well. Um, and it's really beneficial for just things that you should be doing and how you can save money on taxes and just anything and everything you can think of finance related, whether it's saving for retirement, saving for taxes, all the things. So, um, so in that they're going to get like, what are kind of the, the pages that they get in there? I mean, yeah. you, you hit on a couple of them, but like, what are the, the things that are in there? Yeah. There's like a checklist, multiple checklists. So you guys can mm -hmm. kind of go through, um, what you should be doing from start to finish as far as, um, um, like, whenever you're writing things off or business and business account versus per, uh, personal account, QuickBooks, um, saving for taxes, mm -hmm. uh, how to best way to do that, how to earn extra interest and earn money, extra money that you probably aren't even considering, mm -hmm. um, saving for retirement, which a lot of people haven't ever started <laughs> even, mm -hmm. um, sales tax, which is a big one that in Oklahoma, that's, um, something that, I mean, every state is different. But like in specifically in Oklahoma, like you need to be videographers and photographers have to be charging for the sitting fee of every shoot or wedding that they're doing mm -hmm. um, and paying taxes on that. So something a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. and every state's different. So having an account is so important for that. So would that like this uh, creative guide, like if I'm from Idaho, does it still apply or is there like, how does yes. that work? Yeah, it applies for every state and anywhere in the U.S. Um, so... Yeah, it's really it, it it goes over everything as far as it's it's very international. Uh, yeah. And you just That's launched right. that a couple a month ago or something like that maybe. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. I think okay. Two weeks ago. 
And that one's 140, yeah. correct? 140 yes. for that one? Cool. Um, so yeah. definitely if, it, you know, if you're needing, you know, timeline questionnaire templates like that, I mean, hers, the way that she writes them, like it's a very, you know, personal, it doesn't feel like this black and white text kind of thing. It's going to get really good information from your couples. It's going to teach them, you know, about like the, the upcoming wedding day. This is what you need to be thinking about. This is how I shoot, you know, it's okay to kiss in front of the camera. It's okay to be cuddly. It's, you know, like I want you to, and it kind of walks the couple through, um, oh, I, uh, expectations on everything. And then this, that small business guide, I mean, $140 going to save your company. I mean, it's got to save your company thousands and thousands of dollars. Right, so it's yeah. definitely It pays for itself kind of thing. Yeah, definitely worth it. <laughs> and I think that's something that's huge that's not talked about in our industry. It's just doing the taxes and the business side the right way. So huge, um, you know, help to our businesses. Um, we're coming right up on an hour. We're getting close. Um, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for taking your time. I know you're busy traveling back and forth around the whole world. Um, lastly, just a quick plug for where people can find you. I know we talked about Instagram. Um, where where can people find you? Where's the best place if they wanted to reach out to you or, or see these um, templates and, and guides and things like that? Where can they find you? Yeah, probably just on your website. Um www.paintingphotography.com. Uh, so, very confident um, in the website address. I like that. www. It feels <laughs> ridiculous saying your website out loud. It, it does. Especially if. <laughs> Please find me at www. I'm like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I really, you know, I know that you're busy, a busy lady. It's always good to get to chat with you. Um, we'll definitely have to have you back on to talk more. So many more things we could talk about, but thank you so much for being on. For everyone listening, we will see you in the next podcast. Until then, see you.